Hey everybody, today's video is construction on the homestead. So Kibbit decided she wanted to make a Taj Mahal of a chicken coop. Um, her four chickens originally now were up to almost 40. And we've got quite a few in two different uh, chicken tractors that we need to get moved out. So she went with uh, one of the utility sheds. You can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, she went with uh, one that looks like a red barn. But they don't come red. You have to paint them yourself. Now, if you buy these things, you can either pay the company to deliver or, uh, you know, you can haul it yourself. It's really, really heavy. We had a hard time getting it off the truck. But uh, gravity helped doing that. Um, now, these sheds do not come painted. You have to paint yourself. They're just primered. And they do not come with a floor. So they're set up if you want to do like a concrete slab or a wood floor yourself and we decided to go with a raised wood floor and uh, it doesn't come with any roofing material so you need to do tar paper shingles or whatever you want and we had some old tin that uh, some neighbors gave us and then we bought a couple other sheets so that's what we decided to go with Well, Kim just corrected me. It's a Koopaminium. It's not a chicken Taj Mahal. So it's a chicken Koopaminium. So this shed, it's 10 foot by 10 foot and 10 foot so tall. Um, I would definitely recommend getting two 10 foot ladders and three people minimum would really help. Now we work full time. So we only got to work on it on the weekends and it took us almost four weekends to put this thing together. But we're not carpenters, we're not builders, so it was a trial and error. But it turned out pretty good. We picked up some windows and we put vinyl flooring in. So these first pictures show how we did all the flooring. Uh, we put it up on double cinder blocks and then changed our mind and removed one set of cinder blocks because we didn't realize how tall it was gonna be. So you can see uh, the chicken coop was uh, attached to a hoop coop. So we had to separate those two. And then we moved the chicken coop to the back so that the chickens still had their coop to go to at night. And we didn't want to confuse them too much. And then we moved the, uh, the hoop coop out past where the, we keep the pigs and that's gonna be for our meat chickens. So that'll be a good permanent setup for them. Uh, we had moved the original meat chicken hoop coop over top of the pigs and uh, so we had to replace it anyway so instead of having to buy more we just moved that over. So you'll see that in the first pictures how we separated the two and then setting up the floor and putting a vinyl floor again and uh, then we'll be doing the walls. So setting up the walls, uh, we went by the instructions on everything, whether it looked right or not, and as best we could. And now you're gonna find that um, these aren't real precise cuts. So we squared up all the walls and there was no way to really mess it up. 
But once we went and put the roofing on, there were gaps and not sure how that happened. I mean, the walls are 10 feet long and the roof's supposed to be 10 feet wide and you have an inch and a half gap. So I don't know. But um, it did turn out good. And as you can see, putting all the wall sections up and we had to support it. We, we did okay with the two of us, but um, we did have some help, a third person. And because they have you building all these walls separately on the ground, then putting them in place. Unlike, you know, people building a regular house, they put up the, all the two by fours and then they detach the walls to it. But, you know, they had you do it on the ground. So you had to move all that into place. And that was kind of tough. The next part was setting up the trusses. Now they come in uh, two pieces, but they're partially put together, so that wasn't too bad. And we uh, set them in place. Now they did not show using any supports to hold the distance between the trusses, so we added those ourselves. I mean, I've seen enough construction and whatever to know that you need to try to keep your measurement correct with them, so. We added the strips across and that really helped. Why they didn't have you do that in the instructions, I have no idea, but we went ahead and did it anyway. And then the roofing panels, uh, that really took uh, three people. Uh, those two people would hold the sheet up and then uh, a third person nail it in place. So it was kind of tough, but this is when we realized we definitely had to have 10 foot ladder because we only had a six foot so we went out and bought a, a 10 footer but having two 10 foot ladders would be a whole lot handier So then Kim put up all the trim and we added the doors and uh, then we started doing the tar paper. Uh, that was really fun, especially in the heat, but we got it done and it didn't turn out too awful bad. So you can see the paint job we went with, well, Kim went with blue and her sister Karen did most of the painting. She painted all the trim, painted most of the walls, and really helped out and did a really good job. And Kim's real happy with it. So after adding the tar paper, uh, we started installing the uh, tin roofing. We had a neighbor give us some sheets that were uh, red and uh, that saved us quite a bit of money. So we're recycling the, the tin roofing. And uh, we bought a couple of the, the silver sheets. So the top is red, then silver, and then the blue. So it's red, white, and blue. And uh, Kim really uh, was adamant about having it be in red, white, and blue. So that's what it turned out to be. And then we went down to a, um, a window company that had some old windows and they were a little bit bigger than what we were expecting, but they worked. That way she can have good ventilation in uh, the coop. And she also put in some small vents so in the winter time we can have the windows closed but the small vents will still get a little air circulation.
So we're still working on the inside. Kim put up some, uh, it's like fiberglass wall board. Um, this side is going to be the, um, the nesting boxes. And then over on this side is going to be the roosts. That way it's a whole lot easier to clean up. Right now she's sil siliconing between the roof material and the floor. That way if there's any kind of water, moisture, or any liquids, then uh, it'll be easy to clean up and it's not going to go underneath into the wood that's behind it. So the window install turned out pretty good. You can see the trend that she did around it. We still have to uh, fill and touch up some paint. There's the old coop that we're going to be getting rid of. And then this window was really tall window. There's mama with her two babies that are actually uh, not her babies, but she was broody and we stuck them underneath her. So this is a really good size window. And then if you come around this side, I actually think Kim might be the only person in the entire world that has an Airstream window on her coop. So it's a window out of an Airstream trailer. Hi everybody, this is Kim from RK Homestead. Just doing a little bit on the inside and telling you what we're gonna be doing. Um, we already got our windows in. Up in this area, I am gonna put a loft, just some boards going across, just for extra feed or feeders, bedding, things like that, just to keep the chickens out of it, keep the space open. In the back corner, one of the corners, we're gonna put in a small brooder. Normally we don't have more than just a few chicks at a time, so something tiny just to keep them safe from the big chickens. Um, at this point, we're not going to wall the rest of it, but it's ready for it if we decide to do that. There's screens in the windows so we can have these open. The roosts are coming up over here. They're going to come out. Once they're completely done, we'll show you all that. The nesting boxes are finished. We'll be putting those in. Um, I would say within a week, we're going to have chickens in here. I've got about 40 of them, so... Had to have something big enough for all of them. Um, it was a fun build. Neither one of us are carpenters, but we had fun doing it. Just shouldn't do it in the summertime. <laughs> no, not with 99 and 100 degree weather. Right. We've been working early morning until noonish because it's just too hot. Um, but other than that, we put linoleum down. It's just going to have bedding over it. Siliconing, making sure that it's safe for water. Um, we're going to put it in light, obviously, so I can get in here and collect eggs, clean up, do whatever needs to be done. Um, other than that, it's going really good. Um, yeah, so have a great day. And if you want to know anything, just ask. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's it for this one, folks. Once we get the uh, the roost and the nesting boxes inside. Thank you, little man. Right now, he's only our only free-range rooster, so he thinks he's Mr. Cool. So, yeah, once we get the uh, inside taken care of, we'll, uh, we'll definitely make a video of all that. And I've realized that videotaping as you're working takes a lot of time and since this is such a big job and the weather was so hot we just didn't videotape as we were working that way we could get the work done and over with i mean it was miserable hot when i was up on the roof trying to put that tin in it was like 101 degrees and i was just cooking like a roast turkey so all right, well, you guys stay safe. I hope you're staying cool. And until the next time, take care.